Oh, hello there, and welcome to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what's popping up in theaters this week. Today we're looking at Terminator Genesis, a movie with a, well, just look at that title to start. I, I get that they merged the words Genesis and System. It's just that I in the middle there that messes with me. Because there's an E in the middle of the word Genesis and that I should not be there. It taunts me. It's, it's like a puzzle that I can't stop staring at until I make some sense of it. And if you wonder why I'm devoting so much time to the spelling of a single word in this movie's title, then let me explain that the title is a perfect metaphor for this film's plot. It's as if the title is having a competition with the plot in order to see who can be more impenetrable and more clumsily assembled. Here's a spoiler. It's a draw. Okay, for those of you that just wanted to know what the popcorn bucket thought, that was your 30 second review. <laughs> okay, if you want something more in depth, and why wouldn't you? By all means, let's take a trip back to 1984. Ah, 1984. Remember that first Terminator movie and how great it was? I do. It told a classic story of a war between man and machine where the self-aware machines, collectively called Skynet, had resorted to fighting dirty, using time travel to assassinate their biggest adversary, John Connor, both before and then later after he was born. The good guys, including battle scarred John Connor, were able to send back warriors of their own and tie tension action and drama ensued. And in a fun twist, the first warrior sent back in time by the human resistance, Kyle Reese, actually fell in love with Sarah Connor and fathered John Connor before he died. After John and Sarah Connor escaped another attempt on his life as a teenager, now we're into Terminator 2, they set about destroying any chance of Skynet ever being created. They all lived happily ever after, and there was never any reason to revisit this story. But they did. Twice. Now, for the sake of brevity, let's skip the second two sequels entirely, other than to say that they were okay action flicks that did nothing to further the franchise. Now we have Terminator Genesis, Genesis, whatever, which doesn't attempt to further the franchise, but rather tries to reboot it by destroying everything that came before. And it should be said on a side note, to the people who made this movie, who paid a lot of money for the rights and want to get their money's worth, it's okay to just remake it. It's fine. Just get a new, younger cast and tell the exact same story again. It's been over 30 years since the first Terminator. In that span of time, I've seen Peter Parker get bitten by a radioactive spider twice. I've seen Bruce Wayne's family get gunned down three times. Poor guy. And don't tell me you can't remake a Schwarzenegger movie without Schwarzenegger, because that never stopped these guys. Yeah, remember Total Recall starring Colin Farrell? Neither did I. Now, Terminator Genesis begins with a scene we haven't really seen before. John Connor sending Kyle Reese back to protect and impregnate his mother. Now that's fun stuff. But immediately after that, the movie goes off the rails, unleashing a contradictory, complicated time travel plot with all the care and forethought of a grade schooler smashing his toys together. 
You see, when Kyle Reese travels to 1984, Sarah Connor needs no protecting. She's already dispatched the original 1984 Terminator, thank you very much, and knocks off some Asian T-1000 guy without too much trouble either. Not only does Sarah Connor not need any help, but she has a buddy. She has an Arnold Schwarzenegger T-800 Terminator that has been hanging out with her since, I don't know, the early 70s? When a fourth Terminator was sent back to kill her when she was a little girl. Oh, God. Oh, God. And that happened. When a fourth Terminator was sent back he in the 70s. Hey, where are you going? I'm not. I'm not done. You know what? I'll skip. Now, you won't be, believe this when I tell you, but now, only now, am I going to get into the part of this movie that doesn't make any sense. Inexplicably, the merry band of time travelers decides not to rest on their laurels and just enjoy the swinging 80s, but they build a time machine to travel to the year 2017. Why 2017? Just because. And they do it without Kyle and Sarah Connor knocking boots. Not a single boot is knocked. So as soon as they decide to just skip the Clinton years, John Connor doesn't exist. So, hey, score one for the machines. But ho, oh, what is this? John. Hi, Mom. How can you be here? When everyone gets to 2017, who is waiting for them but John Connor? Which is impressive because his parents never boned. Oh, one more thing. He's the bad guy now. Yes, the machines have done something to John Connor to make him part man, part machine. And they've sent him back in time to basically invent Skynet. Which by the way, is not a spoiler because it appears in the movie's trailer and it's only paradox number uh, 85 in this movie's plot. What follows is a series of chases and explosions and escapes that are completely devoid of any suspense or grandeur because there don't appear to be any real stakes or weight to it. There's this one early scene, it's been in the trailer, where a modern-day Arnold Schwarzenegger fights with the computer-generated 1984 Arnold Schwarzenegger, and this should have been a battle royale. The audience should have been on their feet. Instead, this scene is just an introduction to the T-800 and Sarah Connor characters, and the fight itself, which took loads of money and hard work to make happen, just feels perfunctory. In the end, after all this is going on, you find yourself wondering whether all of this could be avoided if at any time Kyle Reese just put down his guns, walked into an emergency room, and got a vasectomy. Big questions are asked in this movie, and the movie will either glibly mock them. Why are they always trying to kill you? I want to help you. I do. I think, but I, I, I gotta understand. I know what's going on here has to be really, really complicated. We're here to stop the end of the world. I can work with that. Or give answers so bogged down with indecipherable nonsense that they make the characters regret asking. This, we know the answers, but we're saving them for the sequel sort of attitude is representative of the arrogance of the Hollywood studio system. That desire to make something cool instead of something fun. This movie is neither cool nor fun. This movie is cynical. This movie is a cash grab. It doesn't respect its audience and it doesn't care enough to get it right. If you need any further proof, just look at the spelling of the title one more time. 
All right, as you know, here at Movies That Pop, we use bags of popcorn to illustrate how I feel about the viewing experience of each film, with our highest rating being the extra large bag of popcorn and our lowest being, well, an empty bag. I think no one's going to be shocked when I tell you that Terminator Genesis is an empty bag. There is not a kernel, not a single morsel worth enjoying in this film does it for movies that pop due to trademark reasons i am unable to give any film a thumbs up but you can give me one if you liked what you saw give us some love by clicking the thumbs up on our page and don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss a review that does it for movies that pop i'm the colonel bye